Hello Chemistry 1B students, this is Mrs. Krupscheider and I'm going to go over um, the, or make a video here for um, ChemQuest 6 converting units. So this is information about dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis is a big scary term that doesn't really need to be scary. It's simple. The basis for dimensional analysis is this. If you multiply something by 1, you do not change its value. Pretty easy, eh? Here's an example. 1 half times 3 over 3 equals 3 six. Notice that the value 1 half didn't really change because 3 over 3 is the same as 1 over 1. Or the same as 1. Again, in mathematics, multiplying by 1 doesn't change the real value of anything. 100 centimeters over 1 meters is a fraction that behaves just like 3 over 3 because 100 centimeters equals 1 meter. Therefore, therefore, neither 3 over 3 nor 100 centimeters over 1 meter will change the real value of a number. Here's an example problem of a conversion. Convert 3.75 centimeters into meters. All you need to do is multiply by a fraction. So I don't typically write it as over 1, okay? So I would just write it as 3.75 centimeters, and we want to know how many meters it is. So I would start with my given, which is the 3.75 centimeters. Now, again, centimeters have to go on the bottom because they need to cancel out, and meters need to go on the top. And then to know what to do here, this is where... Oops, I left out my hecto. <laughs> Oops, hecto. Okay, this is where your metric system A comes into effect. Okay. So again, I always want to know which one's larger. Well, that's a meter. And then how many centimeters? Well, meter is my base, so I move one two times, so it's one with two zeros behind it, or 100, okay? And so then, again, I'm dividing by 100 because it's in the denominator, and 3.75, again, you can do this on your calculator if you need to, 3.75 divided by 100 is, okay, 0 0.0375 meters. Okay, so that's how I would do it, okay? So always begin by putting the number you are given in a fraction over one. Again, I don't think you really need to do that because you should know you're sophisticated enough math students to know you could write this over one. Find a fraction that contains both units that you are working with. In this problem, we are trying to convert centimeters to meters, so we have centimeters and meters in our fraction. Notice that 1 meter and 100 centimeters equal each other. The top and bottom of this fraction must always equal each other. Special note. Take a look at the fraction in step 2. Why is centimeters on the bottom instead of the top? Because in step 1, centimeters is on the top. Whatever unit is on the top in step 1 automatically goes on the bottom in step 2. And again, that's because I want that unit to cross out. Okay. Step three, multiply the two fractions together, right? So this sort of looks like this work that I showed up here. Step four, you don't need to do this. This is kind of silly to me, okay? But if you have to do it, I'm certainly not going to count it wrong, but this is not necessary for me, right? So the person who wrote this says, write everything on the tops together and everything on the bottoms together, then cancel like units, okay? Um, meters is the only unit left, and it's the unit we want. Centimeter cancels out. Equal units in the tops and bottoms cancel. Okay. So, again, I would do it like I talked through up there. I kind of differ a little bit from the person who wrote this um, ChemQuest. So, next... Page two. If you were converting 42 grams into kilograms, 
which fraction would you use as a converting factor, right? So 42 grams, where do grams have to go to cross? They'd have to go in the bottom or the denominator, and kilograms would go in my numerator, okay? So already, right, I'm looking for one with grams on the bottom, so I know it's not this one. I know it's not this one. I know it's not this one. Right, so then the next question is about the numbers. Okay, so which is larger here, a kilogram or a gram? Here's my kilogram. My gram is my base, so kilograms larger, so I'm going to make it one. Okay, and then grams, so I move one, two, three, so a one with three zeros, okay? So, again, not right, not right, right? And so C is my answer, and this is kind of my reasoning that I would use here, okay? So, question number two. How many meters are in 32.5 kilometers? Okay, the problem is started for you. So kilometers, kilometers is in the numerator, so it has to go in the denominator. And this is asking me to take 32.5 kilometers and figure out how many meters it is. So meters is gonna go in the numerator. Kilometers are crossing out. So now I'm ready for my numbers, which is larger, a kilometer or a meter? A kilometer is larger, so I make it one. I write a one and I move one, two, three. Again, you're also welcome to write this as 10 to the third. It's the same number, 10 to the third is 1,000. It's two different ways to write the same thing. So whichever way it makes the most sense to you is perfectly fine by me, okay? So now I'm ready to do this math, right? And because 1,000 is in the numerator, I know I'm going to multiply by it. Any numbers that are in the denominator, I'm going to divide by them. So, again, I've told you before, I'm not a good math student, okay? So here I am. I'm going to do 30, oops, come on, calculator, 32.5 times 1,000 equals... 32,500 meters, because that's the only unit that's left. So again, how about significant figures here? Well, this number has three. This is a definition and has unlimited significant figures. And this number also has three. So I'm right in terms of significant figures. Number three, how many microliters are there in 32.5 liters? So 32.5 liters equals how many microliters? So again, I'm gonna start with 32.5 liters. Liters have to go on the bottom so they cross out. I'm converting to microliters this time. Liters are here. Microliters are here, so liters are larger, so I have to make it one. And this is a one, and now I'm going to count. Now, I have to include these little dash lines, because those are factors of 10. So, liter is my base, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Six zeros. Again, this might be one where it would be easy to write it just as 10 to the six. Okay. So... Put this in my calculator, 32.5 times 10 to the 6th, if I'm going to do it that way. Okay. And I'm probably at this point going to change my calculator, and I'll kind of show you how to do that. Um, second, this into my scientific mode. And then it's going to give me my answer in scientific notation, which is 3.25 times 10 to the 7th microliters. Significant figures, again I have three here and I have three here, so that's right in terms of significant figures. Okay. So again, um, 
that's how I would do those. So we have some information, non-base unit to non-base unit. So far, we have been converting a prefixed unit into a base unit or vice versa. So what they're saying here is the base was always involved, okay? It gets a little more complex when we want to convert a prefixed unit into another prefixed unit. Whatever, whenever such is the case, convert to the base unit first and then finish the problem. Uh-uh. We don't need to do this. Okay, and so this is where I'm really different from what you're going to see on this ChemQuest. Okay, that makes more work for you. And I'm all about as little work as possible. I know you guys don't believe me, but I really am. Okay, so we're going to ignore this. Okay, so I'll show you how to do this. Um, again, I'm going to rewrite my little metric system thing here where you can see it. Because with this, I don't need to do this the way the person who wrote this is saying you have to do it. And I think it's easier the way I'm going to show you. So we're not going to break this into steps. No. Okay. We're just going to take 40 kilometers and figure out how many centimeters that is. So I start with my 40 kilometers. Kilometers are going to go on the bottom because they're in the numerator. Now they have to be in the denominator and I'm converting to centimeters, which will be in my numerator. Doing them exactly like we've done the other ones. Now I come over here and I look at my a metric system, right? And here's kilometer. So here's the kilo and here's centi. So kilo is larger. So I'm going to make it equal to one. And I'm going to count, right? I start here. So one, two, three, four, five, ten to the fifth. Or you could write a one with five zeros behind it, whatever you prefer. Right, so now I'm ready to do this problem 40 times 10 to the fifth. And I get 4 times 10 to the sixth centimeters. Okay, which is exactly right. Now, significant figures this is that understood zero or dust or understood decimal. So this zero is not significant. So this number really only has one significant figure. So this answer only has one significant figure. I think, I mean, if you did it this way and it made a lot of sense to you, that's fine. To me, this is simpler. We're going to already be doing problems that are going to require multiple conversion factors when we move into chapter seven. I don't need to add extra steps to a simple problem like this as long as I know how to use this metric system aid that I've given you, okay, you should be good to go and able to do these in one step. So let's take a look at our next page. Question number five, how many kiloliters are there in this many milliliters? So again, I'm going to go ahead and put my metric system, I'm going to try to put it a little bit more centered so that maybe it'll stay on the page when I move it. And this, again, you're going to use often enough that you probably really do need to have it memorized. Okay, sorry. Okay. So question number five, how many kiloliters are there in 34,000 500 liters. So 34,500, sorry, milliliters is how many kiloliters. Again, not going to worry about doing this in two steps. I'm going to do it in one. So I start with my given 34,500 milliliters. Milliliters have to go on the bottom, so they'll cross out. Kiloliters on the top. Okay. Here's kilo, here's milli, so kilo is larger, so I'm going to make it one. 
Millie then to figure out how many it is, I count. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Ten to the sixth. Now, should I multiply or divide this time? I should divide because 10 to the 6 is in the denominator this time. Okay, so on my calculator, 34,500 divided by 10 to the 6, and I get 3.45 times 10 to the negative first kiloliter. You also, you don't have to write it in scientific notation, right? I'm never going to count it wrong if you write it as 0 0.0345 kiloliters, okay? I don't care, okay? I do expect you, if I give you an answer in scientific notation on your own to be able to figure out what it is, not in scientific notation, okay? But I don't care which way you give me answers. So question number six. How many micrometers are in this many kilometers? So 0 0.0035 kilometers is how many micrometers? So again, I'm going to start with my given. 0 0.0035 kilometers. Kilometers will be on the bottom so that they will cross out. Micrometers are going to be on the top. All right, here's my metric system again. Here's a micrometer. Here's a kilometer. So kilometer is larger, so I'm going to make it 1. I'm going to go 10, 2, and now I'm going to count to see what my exponent should be. So I start at kilo, and I just kind of count. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Right? I have to include those little dashes that are in there. Those are factors of 10. I can see I'm going to be left with my answer in micrometers. So again, with my calculator, how do I do this? Okay, 0 0.0035 times, I know I'm multiplying because 10 to the ninth is in the numerator, 10 to the ninth. And I get 3.5 times 10 to the sixth micrometers. Okay. All right, how many grams are there in? So 1.45 megagrams equals how many grams? So again, I start with my given 1.45 megagrams. Megagrams has to go on the bottom, so it crosses out. Grams goes on the top. Mega is here. Gram is my base, so mega is larger. I'm gonna make it one, 10, two, and I'm gonna count. Again, I have to include these when I count. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10 to the 6. Okay. Again, 1.45 times 10 to the 6. I know I'm multiplying because 10 to the 6 is in the numerator. And I end up with 1.45 times 10 to the 6 grams. How many milligrams does it take to equal 2.5 kilograms? So 2.5 kilograms equals how many milligrams? So 2.5 kilograms is my given that I start with. Kilograms goes on the bottom. Milligrams goes on the top. Kilogram is here. Milligram is here. So my kilogram is larger. I make it 1, 10, 2. Again, I'm starting at kilo, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10 to the 6. I should multiply because 10 to the 6 is in the numerator. So, again, if you need your calculator, that's fine. 2.5 times 10 to the 6, right, which is just 2.5 times 10 to the 6 milligrams. Number nine, and this is kind of, again, a little preview, right? I know that these have been pretty easy, and you probably didn't even need to use your calculator because you could just move your decimal left and right. But 
we're not going to be dealing with the metric system a whole lot as we move into chapter 7. We're going to do be doing problems more like number 9. So one atomic mass unit is equal to 1.66. So this is being given to me, so I have it as a conversion factor. Okay. Using a conversion factor, find the number of grams in 345 AMUs equals how many grams. So again, I still approach it the same way. 345 AMUs is what I'm going to start with because it's my given. AMUs have to go in the denominator. Grams have to go in the numerator. Now I'm using this information here. So in front of AMUs is 1, and in front of grams is 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24. Again, should I multiply these numbers together or divide? I multiply because this is the numerator. So, to put this in my calculator, okay, I'm going to take 345 times 1.66. I'm going to use that e button, okay, negative 24. And I get. And again, in terms of significant figures here, right, I should only have 3, so I'm going to write this as 5.73 times 10 to the negative 22nd grams. Okay, I'm trying to kind of take the glare off of that. Okay. So, number 10, using the information question 9, how many AMUs is this? So this time, Starting with 2.55 times 10 to the negative 23rd grams, I want to know how many AMUs that is. So 2.55 times 10 to the negative 23rd grams. Grams this time has to go in the bottom. AMUs go on the top. In front of AMUs, I have 1. In front of grams, I'm going to have 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24th. Okay. Now, this time, right, I'm not multiplying, I'm dividing, because this number's in my denominator. So, again, maybe if I turn off the light on here, it'll be a little bit easier for you to kind of see, okay, how I type this in. Okay, so 2.55e, negative 23rd divided by 1.66 e negative 24th. Okay, so that's typed in the equal, and I get, again, I should have three significant figures here, so I'm going to write this as 1.54 times 10 to the first AMUs, Right, which is the same as a hundred or fifteen point four, okay, AMUs. So I don't care which way you write it, okay. So number eleven asks you to make the following conversions, okay. and we will just kind of slide them in here where we have some room. Okay. So. 24.5 milliliters, milliliters on the bottom, liters on the top, liters are here, milliliters are here, so liters are larger, 1, 2, 3, 1,000, right, I should be dividing, so 24.5 divided by 1,000, okay, 2.45 times 10 to the negative second, okay. right, which is the same as 0 0.0245. I don't care which way you write it. So if you don't like your calculator being in this mode, right, second degree, 
I can change it back and it'll change my answer. Um, B. Sorry, it's easier for me to write <laughs> if I angle my paper, but okay, 12.5 meters to centimeters. So 12.5 meters, meters to centimeters. Um, meters is my base. Here's centimeters. So meters is larger. It's one, two, so 100. I should multiply this time. So I have 12.5 times 100, right? So 1,250 centimeters. Again, if you don't have to do use a calculator, that's perfectly fine. Letter C, which I'll do right here, 45.9 kilograms. Kilograms are going to go on the bottom. Milligrams are going to go on the top. Okay. Um, kilograms is right here. Milligrams is here, so kilograms is larger, 10 to the... One, two, three, four, five, six, ten to the six. Right? So 45.9 times 10 to the six, okay, is um, 4.59 times 10 to the seventh milligrams. Kilometers to micrometers, so 3.45 times 10 to the negative fifth kilometers. Kilometers on the bottom, micrometers on the top. Okay. Kilometers are right here, micrometers are here, so kilometers are definitely bigger. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten to the ninth. So I get three point four five times ten to the fourth micrometer. Number or letter E, 4.6 times 10 to the 11th nanometers, nanometers to meters, um, sorry, write this down, meters are my base, nanometers are right here, so meters are larger, 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 to the 9th. This time I should divide because I'm in my denominator. Four point six times ten to the second, or four hundred and sixty okay, meters. And our last one. 31.95 megagrams, megagrams to kilograms. Here's my mega, here's my kilo, so mega is larger. And I go, sorry, one, two, three, ten to the third. So, 31.95 times 10 raised to the third, okay, 3.195 times 10 to the fourth kilograms. So I hope if you were struggling with this, that helps you out. Have a great day and I will talk to you tomorrow.